नमस्कार मित्रों गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू आप सबका स्वागत है यू आर वेरी वार्मली वेलकम वी आर मीटिंग आफ्टर सम टाइम बिकॉज ऑफ द इंटरवीनिंग विजिट्स आई डू नॉट हैव एनी प्रिपेयर स्टेटमेंट और अनाउंसमेंट टू मेक बट आई डू हैव टू सप्लीमेंट एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन विच आई विच वी शूड अर्लियर इन द डे दिस इज ऑन द अनफॉर्चुनेट फायर ट्रेजडी इन नजरान इन सऊदी अरेबिया वी हैड Uh, circulated to you electronically uh, most of you would have received the names of uh, 11 indian workers who unfortunately passed away in the fire incident tomorrow uh, morning in saudi arabia uh, i beg your pardon passed away yesterday morning in saudi arabia uh, so the 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 state affiliations of the two individuals the last two individuals were not available at the time we sent the information to you uh, now those are available number 10 on that list that you would have uh, mr subedar is from punjab and uh, number 11 mohammad wasim is from uttar pradesh so, so that makes it out of 11 5 from uttar pradesh 3 from kerala one each from bihar tamil nadu and punjab uh we have circulated it on the uh, list kindly look that up but i have it here if you wish i can uh, just bear with me for a second it's uh, murakunandan kalyan murakunandan kalyan m kalyan uh so uh, uh, as we had also mentioned our consulate is extending all possible help official has been deputed to be there they are also in touch with the governorate of najran region which is quite far about 900 kilometers from jeddah uh, but we are in touch with the local authorities as well as the hospital to uh, ensure that uh, all possible assistance and uh, treatment is extended to the injured five injured who are there their details are being obtained and also uh, our consulate will uh, be all uh, assisting in the repatriation of the mortal remains early repatriation of mortal remains and uh, completing other formalities with the employers so that is an that is a piece of information on this tragic incident i thought i should supplement because we had circulated the information i have no further information and announcement from my side i see hands going up vinita and uh, yeah then we'll, we'll take it on after there yeah Well, this is on China. Uh, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson yesterday, uh, you know, tried to bring in uh, Kashmir into the whole controversy at the Sikkim region uh, that the standoff that we are having, uh, and he's saying because of Kashmir, the entire region is disturbed. Would you like to comment on that? Vinita, it is not fair on my part to comment on another official's comment. Uh, however, we have seen the report, and. Uh, our stand is absolutely clear I, as far as i recall the the reports that i have seen on the on the remarks that you referred to uh, mention something about the kashmir issue being central to peace and stability you all very well are aware and as not only the government but also indians all of us know that uh, it is at the heart of the matter is really the issue of cross border terrorism perpetrated on india and uh, including on the people of the state of jammu and kashmir so uh, really the matter is that uh, cross border terrorism in our region emanating from a particular source is uh, threatening the peace and stability of not only uh, india but other neighbors and also uh, i mean the peace and stable peace in india and peace and stability of the of the entire region and the world uh, so so that's where we stand as far as uh, kashmir issue itself is concerned you know that uh, Uh, the, the government's position has been very consistent and clear we are ready to uh, we have been ready to uh, have dialogue with pakistan uh, among other issues on jammu and kashmir but in a bilateral framework so that that position of uh, addressing all issues with pakistan including the jammu and kashmir issue in a bilateral framework has not changed adit Uh, Mr. Bagli, there have been some unusual claims in the Pakistani media that uh, in the state of Jammu and Kashmir there are some chemical weapons being used. Uh, any reaction to that? And there are some counter claims also that Hezbollah Mujahideen indeed is using, uh, you know, chemical weapons. They are thinking of using that. And uh, if I may, on Kulbushan Jadav, any update? Uh, thank you, Adit. Uh, 
you are right, the claims are not only unusual, but they're completely baseless and, in fact, uh, incorrect. Uh, India, as you know, is uh, against the use of chemical weapons by anywhere, uh, by anyone, anywhere in the world. Uh, in fact, uh, it was quite surprising for us to see that uh, what the government of Pakistan was saying, essentially, they, were, they, they had taken the cue or they had taken a leaf out of the book of lashkar e -Toyba on those ridiculous comments and uh, I cannot comment you, I draw your, you to leave your own conclusions as to what it implies if a government is reading from the textbooks or statements uh, by, by an internationally banned terrorist organization. On Kulbushan Jadav, there is a process which is on. Uh, in the International Court of Justice. Last time we spoke about it, we had mentioned that there will be uh, a memorial or a submission from India uh, by 13th, and then so the court had given certain timelines for India as well as to Pakistan. That process is underway. Those things are being done. And uh, in terms of consular access to us uh, for, for Mr. Yadav, uh, Mr. Jadav, I think there is no progress on that as far as my information is concerned. And also on the visa for the family, including the mother, uh, I, I think there is no change in the position that was prevailing when we spoke on this the last. Oma. सर अभी पाकिस्तान मीडिया में रिपोर्ट आ रही है कि पाकिस्तान फॉरेन ऑफिस ने बयान दिया है कि वो कंसीडर कर रहे हैं कुलभूषण जाधव की मां के वीजा को लेकर तो अभी आपने तो क्लेरिफाई किया लेकिन क्या कोई डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल के जरिए अभी तक ये सूचना नहीं आई है नहीं उमा हमारे पास जो सूचना इस तरह की कोई नहीं है मैंने भी वो मीडिया रिपोर्ट देखी है जो आप कह रहे हैं कि उनकी ब्रीफिंग में अभी थोड़ी देर पहले ही शायद उन्होंने कहा है शायद उनके इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया में पाकिस्तान में खबर है हमने भी उसको देखा है लेकिन डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स के माध्यम से इस तरह की कोई जानकारी अभी हमारे पास नहीं है सर भारत और चीन के बीच जो कन्फ्लिक्ट है डोकला एरिया में वो लगातार बना हुआ है यहाँ तक कि फॉरेन सेक्रेटरी के जो बयान आए उससे भी चीन इत्तेफाक नहीं रखता है और जाहिर तौर पर चीन की तरफ से लगातार ये दबाव बन रहा है कि भारत अपनी सेना को वापस बुलाए उसके बाद भी स्थिति वहाँ पर सामान्य हो सकती है हम किन माध्यमों से कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि स्थिति वहाँ पर बदतर ना हो यानी युद्ध के हालात ना बने और क्या भारत की तरफ से अभी तक कदम उठाए गए मधुरेंद्र आपको पता है आप सब लोगों को पता है कि ब्रिक्स लीडर्स की जो इनफॉर्मल मीटिंग हुई थी अनौपचारिक भेंट हुई थी हेम्बर्ग में जी ट्वेंटी शिखर सम्मेलन के मार्जिन्स पर उसमें प्रधानमंत्री मोदी और राष्ट्रपति शी जिनपिंग के बीच ब्रिक्स इनफॉर्मल्स लीडर्स मीटिंग के बाद एक वार्तालाप सा एक संवाद हुआ था एक कन्वर्सेशन हुआ था जिसमें उन्होंने बहुत सारे मुद्दों पे बात करी थी एक रेंज ऑफ इश्यूज एज वी हैड सेड दे डिस्कस्ड एज फार एज डोकला एरिया इशू इज़ कंसर्न यू नो वी वी हैव डिप्लो वी हैव डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स अवेलेबल द एम्बेसीज आर देयर इन बोथ कंट्रीज एंड दोज चैनल्स विल कंटिन्यू टू बी यूज निधि एज आई सेट दैट डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स विल विल कंटिन्यू टू बी यूज uh, I just wanted to know that, you know, tomorrow the Home Minister is presiding over a meeting on Jammu and Kashmir and China. And uh, the Home Ministry says that uh, the Foreign Minister will also be present and the Foreign Secretary. Can we confirm uh, if they will be uh, briefing the opposition? And also, what were the range of issues discussed between the Prime Minister and the Chinese President in five minutes? Your question is about range of issues or five minutes? Or both? All right. Affairs has actually denied it. They were asked three times. You must have seen that exchange. And they said there was no bilateral meeting. And, and then they said there was no meeting at all. Uh, I mean, it, it seems as if they are not even conceding the range of issues were discussed. I always passed every, every exam. I never took any supplementary, so I would, I would request you to hold on your supplementary for me right now. I will answer the original and supplement and then come back, come back to you. Well, it seems questions are directed at me, so I am taking the supplementary. But thank you for, for uh, being, my, being my support on that. Uh, well, Nidhi, as far as uh, the meeting that you asked about tomorrow, uh, there is perhaps a meeting. Perhaps I'm saying because I still don't have any uh, written word on that, but I have understood that uh, there is a meeting tomorrow at tomorrow in the afternoon. 
Uh, I do not know where it is, uh, but I think maybe it is called by Home Minister or Home Minister will be, will be present in the meeting. The External Affairs Minister will also be present in the meeting, but that is the information I, I have. I do not know what the subject uh, or what subjects uh, it is going to deal with. But there, will be a, there is a meeting that I have learnt of in which External Affairs Minister will be present tomorrow. Uh, now, your other question uh, was about, uh, could, could I ask you to briefly repeat? What was your other question about? Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Yeah, yeah sure. What range were the issues. range of issues in that short span of five minutes in which I'm sure translations sure. took about two and a half? And the Chinese MFA saying, you know, not just no bilateral, but no meeting at all. Uh, yeah, I know. Thank you very much. Uh, I would only refer you back to the information that we put out uh, this, the same afternoon. After the meeting, we had tweeted. Uh, there was a there was a picture that we had tweeted. There was a brief text that we had put in, in which we had said that uh, at the BRICS leaders' informal uh, meeting at Hamburg on the sidelines of the G20 summit, uh, host, the meeting, the BRICS leaders' meeting, informal meeting was hosted by China. Uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi had a conversation on a range of issues. Now, uh, it is not for me to comment uh, as to what. The, what ground the two leaders covered. Uh, there, there was a conversation between them. There was a range of issues. That was the subject matter of that conversation. Uh, so, Hasni, this should also answer your question, I suppose. So, I have done with one original, one supplementary. Ranjit, I would come to you uh, later. Uh, Vinay, oh, sorry, Vijay. No, no, I have seen it. Because Ranjit had, uh, Vijay had uh, raised his hand earlier, so after this I will come to both of you. Uh, Gopal, just want to know, uh, is the NSA visiting China on 26th of this month? I don't have information on that at this moment. I can check. Akhilesh. So, so the type of statements that is coming from China, almost every day some statement is coming that is provocative and that is also threatening to war. So uh, from... Indian side, nothing is coming that can assure the people of India that what is the situation. So what is your take on that? I, I heard your question, uh, but the two aspects, I don't fully understand it. Uh, as to what you mean by that nothing is coming from the Indian side that can assure the people of India. And to the extent that I understand it, I don't agree with your assertion. Uh, the reason is very simple. Uh, you have seen our statement that we had brought out uh, last month and uh, we have clearly laid out our position and our approach. Both the things have been very clearly laid out on that. We had also referred to how the two governments have been engaged over the past few years in addressing this important issue and also how do we wish to address this issue uh, in future. The whole boundary matter and the tri-junctions. We had also mentioned the relevant understandings between the two countries. Now, uh, you, have, you would have seen Foreign Secretary's uh, speech, or you would have heard or seen the text of it yesterday, which he delivered at Singapore. There are, uh, since you are already familiar with them, I don't need to repeat it to you, but he has referred to the understanding between the two leaders, or what, what we have referred to as the Astana consensus, the two points in that. Uh, and uh, which is essentially, again, underlines the approach that we are following in this regard. So we are very much seized of the matter. We are very much uh, sure of the approach that has been taken. And that's where it stands. So recently, Sri Lankan government has passed a new fishing bill uh, to prevent Tamil Nadu fishermen uh, from fishing the territorial uh, traditional waters in Park Bay. So Tamil Nadu government has urged Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, to lodge a strong protest over, uh, against this move. So any steps taken by the government? Uh, as far as I understand your question, you are saying that the Th Sri Lankan government has asked, uh, has issued uh, or passed a resolution uh, banning... New fishing bill, which confiscate yes. the fishing vessels and uh, imprisonment for two years and fine up to 50,000. Or fishing in their territorial, territorial waters. Yeah. So what would be your question? So Tamil Nadu Chief Minister has uh, written a letter to, to the government. Uh, Prime Minister and uh, expressed concerns that uh, 
this will affect our uh, fishermen and uh, uh, urge the Prime Minister Narendra Modi to lodge a strong protest over this move. Okay. Uh, look, the two governments have been engaged in discussions about the fishermen issue for a very long time. You are aware of the history. Whenever there is an incident in which uh, Indian fishermen are apprehended or the boats are apprehended, we work with the Sri Lankan government and in most cases we are able to secure early release of the fishermen and also boats from time to time. Now, uh, from what you are saying, I understand, I, I don't have information on this, this particular bill, but uh, I will need to check on that, what the provisions are. But if it is about their own territory, then I don't think uh, what should be the reason for your question. But I will check about this particular bill, and if there is any supplementary information, I can come back to you. Is there any, so is there any update on the missing Indians in Mosul, okay. with the minister being there? Thank you very much for your question. In fact, uh, you are aware that, as you have said, that uh, the Minister of State for uh, External Affairs, uh, General V.K. Singh, is in uh, Baghdad, uh, is in Iraq. He went to Erbil. And uh, I think last night he had reached Baghdad. In, uh, in uh, Erbil, he met a number of local authorities, a number of senior uh, officials in the local authorities. And in Baghdad, he, to, 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 to the best of my information so far, he has met the uh, Iraqi foreign minister, uh, Dr. Ibrahim al-Jafri. And uh, he has handed over to him a letter from the external affairs minister uh, addressed to the foreign, foreign minister of Iraq, Dr. Uh, Ibrahim al-Jafri. Uh, when we had uh, issued our remarks on the developments, we had obviously welcomed the liberation of Mosul. Uh, it is a significant development. It, it, it represents uh, you know, a brave victory by the Iraqi forces assisted by the international coalition on the forces of uh, evil and destruction which Daesh represents. And uh, we had also uh, mentioned about the missing Indians. So the visit of General VK Singh is basically in this context, the liberation of Mosul, and are conveying that, that India re remains steadfast in its support to Iraq in the fight against terrorism, and also, of course, our concern about the missing Indians. Mosul is still a city which is which there where the where the process is continuing uh, after the announcement of the liberation of the city. So as, as and when we have any information coming out uh, from there regarding these 39 missing Indians, uh, we will let you know. Uh, at the moment, we remain engaged very sincerely and very seriously at a high level. Uh, our ambassador has been alerted. Our Consul General in Erbil has been alerted. We have also requested the Iraqi authorities, and they have confirmed to us that they have uh, sensitized their uh, forces, their security agencies, about the presence of Indians. And if they see any Indians, not just these 39, but any Indians, we have requested them to inform us, uh, our ambassador or our consulate general, uh, Consul General. We have also uh, requested the Iraqi authorities to alert the airport so that if just in case some Indians appear at the airport, so our embassy and our consulate should be informed. So we have covered all these four possible uh, grounds, possible points. Uh, the Iraq Iraqi authorities, our ambassador, our consul general, the airport. So whichever way, if any Indian appears there, we hope to get the information about that. Shridhar. Sir, does the MEA have any reaction on uh, the meeting that took place on Saturday between the Chinese envoy and uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi? Uh, that is the uh, that is one and uh, related question. Um, you know, you've spoken that uh, the there are uh, sort of you are dealing with China through the diplomatic channels to find a way out. But uh, after that statement that you issued about two weeks ago, uh, what what is the situation on the ground at Doklam? Uh, does the standoff continue or is there a force accretion? Can you tell us something about the situation on the ground? To your first question, Sridhar, and, and I would request colleagues to limit themselves to one question, please, if they could. So I, I could choose not, not to answer your second question. 
<laughs> that is, once you have asked two questions, it is up to me which one to choose. But okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer both your questions. Uh, as far as the first question is concerned, uh, MEA does not deal with foreign embassies. I mean, in the sense of commenting on their activities or their, their events or their engagements. And I certainly don't deal with political parties. Uh, so I deal only with the government, the government of India. My, my responsibility in terms of interacting with you people is what the government does, my own ministry does. Uh, this, as to the second question, you know, I would, I would take you back to what we have said earlier, that uh, what we issued, the statement that we issued in the end of June, like you said, two weeks ago, I would uh, remind you that uh, there was a conversation on a range of issues between the two leaders at Hem Hamburg, and uh, also the fact that the diplomatic channels remain available to both sides. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Did the Doklam issue also f also figure in that conversation between Presidency and Prime Minister Modi? Uh, I would leave it to your imagination and uh, common sense to, to, to summarize what should be covered in the range of issues. Yeah. Sir, during the G20, there was a bilateral between uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the British counterpart, um, specifically on economic offenders, which obviously mentions, which obviously we mean uh, Vijay Malya and um, Mr. Modi. Uh, so, so can you give us the details, inner details, the finer details? And how does it help India's cause when it comes to um, getting back uh, Vijay Malaya? Well, the Prime Minister, as we had put out, we, had, uh, we understand the importance of this, uh, this matter, uh, for not only for the economy, but from the information point of view for, and professional point of view for all of you who covered, who covered the MEA beat. Uh, so we had put out the information right then, mentioning that the Prime Minister had raised the issue of uh, escaped Indian offenders. Uh, with uh, Prime Minister May and had requested the cooperation of United Kingdom. The facts on that, uh, you are aware that there is a process for extradition of Mr. Malia, which is underway. Uh, the British Foreign uh, Office or the Foreign and Commonwealth Office has referred the matter to their, uh, their home department, their home office. And now there is a matter which is, which is going on in the courts. Uh, there is a court which is seized with the matter in, in, uh, in London. So that process is subjudice, this is underway. The government has, the Prime Minister raising this matter with, with Prime Minister May itself is an indication of the importance that the government attaches to bringing back economic offenders uh, who have escaped from India back to the country to face uh, justice uh, back in India. Hello, sir. I'm Ashok Raj from ANI. Sir, is there any MEA planning to revoking Jakir Nayak passport? Look, this, this is a matter, strictly speaking, uh, for the law enforcement agencies or investigation agencies. What I can mention to you is that we had received a request uh, in this regard from the concerned uh, agency uh, sub a few days ago. We have taken action on that request to revoke the passport. There is a procedure, uh, there is a process for, uh, for such steps which needs to comply with the rules and regulations with the prevalent law. And under those provisions, under that law, we had taken the action. And whenever uh, there is more information with us, uh, we can come back to you. Thanks for finally coming to me, Mr. Barclay. Uh, uh, you referred to the June 30th statement of ours, of the Indian government, on the uh, Dokla issue, Dokla issue. And you referred to the way in, in, in that as well, we've referred to how in the past India and China have resolved similar uh, situations. The Foreign Secretary also referred to the past ability of India and China to resolve these issues through dialogue. But the following day, the Chinese Foreign Ministry suggested that the current incident is very different from past instances. Uh, in a sense, pointing out that, that, that uh, in their understanding, just the routine way we've resolved past issues may not necessarily work. What is your view on that? Will the way we have passed in the past resolve these disputes be enough to resolve this current situation? Thank you, Charu. The thing really is that uh, we have accumulated a lot of experience from the past, both sides, uh, in addressing a number of matters. Uh, you know it, and it has been said, 
not mere not only by us but by others also that that the border has been peaceful uh, and that is a result of the effort that the two countries have both the sides have put in in maintaining tranquility at the border so i i would not like to comment on on what others say in this regard i i i would like to confine myself to what is the what is the approach of the government of india what is our thinking in terms of uh, addressing a dispute or ad addressing a situation that that we are dealing with right now and obviously i am not an astrologer so i can't predict what will happen tomorrow but i can certainly tell you uh, that the approach that we had underlined and uh, and put out uh, at the end of the last month uh, that that continues Uh, गोपाल जी uh, अभी कांग्रेस uh, के सांसद मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट राहुल गांधी चाइनीज uh, इन्वर्स से मिलने के पहले क्या सरकार को सूचित किया था नहीं मुझे ऐसी कोई जानकारी नहीं है सर इन द मीटिंग विद Yemeni's deputy prime minister the matter regarding father tom urnal was also discussed how are we pursuing this matter uh thank you very much for asking this question we had uh, uh, we had informed the media that that day also through through a press release in fact the discussions with the, the yemeni's deputy prime minister and foreign minister uh, were extremely cordial were very wide ranging and they covered a number of issues of course the current situation in yemen the, in the region and the relations between india and yemen uh on the issue of father tom which em had raised with uh, the yemeni deputy prime minister and foreign minister uh, they ex they they mentioned two things one they mentioned that he is alive according to the information available to them he is alive and that they are making all possible efforts for relocating him for locating him and for his early release so uh, i would say that this uh, this this was a very encouraging assurance from the yemeni deputy prime minister and foreign minister and they assured that they will continue to extend all cooperation to us uh, in in securing the early release of father tom thank you i want to go back to the issue of china yesterday the people's daily published an editorial which was reproduced from september 1962 which broadly says that uh, what india is doing is way beyond what china could tolerate and therefore india should be prepared for dire consequences so when read together with the recent statements and remarks made by the chinese foreign ministry what do you make of this uh, so called heightened rhetoric on the part of china thank you it is really not for me to comment on the uh, on on the editorials or opinion pieces appearing in the media we, as you know we not we don't normally do it this matter that we are dealing with is a is is a serious matter it has implications for us for the for 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 a, for a number of reasons and uh, therefore we remain engaged in addressing this matter you we have outlined our position we have outlined our approach and that's all what i would have to say in this regard आपने कहा कि चीन के साथ गतिरोध को ख़त्म करने के लिए डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स के जरिए बातचीत हो रही है चीन का एक स्टेटेड पोजीशन है जिसमें उन्होंने कहा है कि दोकलम क्षेत्र में भारतीय फ़ौजों का जाना गलत है और किसी भी बातचीत के लिए एक प्री कंडीशन है कि वो अपनी फ़ौजें वापस करें तो क्या आप ये कहना चाह रहे हैं कि चीन ने अपनी उस स्थिति को रिवाइज़ किया है और इस गतिरोध को ख़त्म करने के लिए भारत के साथ बातचीत के लिए तैयार हो गया है मैंने जो कहा वो आप समग्रता में देखें मैंने ये कहा कि हमने पिछले महीने एक एक प्रेस रिलीज एक विज्ञप्ति जारी करी थी जिसमें कि सिचुएशन के ऊपर जो हमारी हमारा हमारा नज़रिया है उसको हमने प्रस्तुत किया था जो उसके संबंध में इस उस सब पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन के बारे में और लार्जर इशू के बारे में जो हमारा नज़रिया है हमारी जो अप्रोच है उसको हमने प्रस्तुत किया था और उसके बाद मैंने कहा कि कन्वर्सेशन हुआ था रेंज ऑफ इश्यूज़ पर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी और प्रेसिडेंट शी जिनपिंग के बीच में ब्रिक्स लीडर्स की अनौपचारिक मुलाकात के बाद हेम्बर्ग में सात तारीख को और फिर मैंने कहा कि डिप्लोमेटिक चैनल्स रिमेन अवेलेबल वो उपलब्ध बने आ रहे हैं वो बने हुए हैं तो इसमें ये कहना कि क्या हो रहा है और क्या नहीं हो रहा है वो मुझे नहीं लगता इस वक्त मैं उस बारे में कोई कमेंट करना चाहूँगा और आगे 
लेकिन मैं आपसे ये ज़रूर गुजारिश करूँगा कि आज जो मैंने कहा उसको आप समग्रता में देखें चीन के साथ विवाद में भूटान का भी रोल आ रहा है तो अब तक भारत को भूटान का क्या रुख देखने को मिला है ऐसा ऐसी रिपोर्ट आई थी कि चीन ने उससे विवाद में कुछ एक्सचेंज की भी बात कही है कि एक तरफ का हिस्सा आप ले लें एक तरफ हमें दे दें ये बिल्कुल उचित नहीं है मेरे लिए कि मैं इस तरीके के अंतर्क्रिया में इस तरीके के इंटरेक्शन में किसी दूसरे कंट्री की मित्र देश की भूटान जो जिसके साथ हमारे खाली मित्रता के संबंध नहीं है पड़ोसी के संबंध नहीं है बल्कि बहुत विशिष्ट संबंध है उसके उसने क्या नज़रिया लिया है इस तरह की अटकलबाजी पर कोई टिप्पणी करूँ पहले तो वो अटकलबाजी ही अपने आप में ठीक नहीं लगती और उस पर कोई टिप्पणी करना तो और भी गलत है लेकिन मैं खाली आपका ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहूँगा गवर्नमेंट ऑफ भूटान ने जो एक प्रेस विज्ञप्ति जारी करी थी इस सिचुएशन के बारे में मेरे ख्याल से वो छब्बीस सत्ताईस अट्ठाईस उसी कभी जारी करी गई थी आप उसको देख सकते हैं ओके सो विद दैट वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ टुडेज इंटरेक्शन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर बियरिंग विद मी नमस्कार